What's going on, Fight Fans? Welcome to the Watch List UFC 202. John Anik alongside Joe Silva and Sean Shelby. August 20th inside this very building, the T-Mobile Arena. It shall be done, the rematch. Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. Conor wanted this fight, wanted it at 170. Getting close now. That fight happened originally at 170 because Nate Diaz came in very late notice, was not going to be able to make his normal 155, so they did it at 170. Well, now they have plenty of time. Right. So you'd figured they'd do it at 55, but Connor's like, no, I lost at 70. I don't want there to be any excuses, anything. This is where I'm going to win it back. So you've got to admire him for that. Nate Diaz, he did so well on such short notice. How does he do with a full camp to prepare? It's a fascinating fight, but as we've seen very recently, anything can happen. So just like everybody else, I'm just going to be at the edge of my seat watching going, We'll see, but it's probably going to be crazy whichever way it goes. That's for sure. Prevailing wisdom is that you're going to see a better Nate Diaz on the strength of a full training camp, but at least right now here in Las Vegas, Conor McGregor holding as a slight favorite. So you're lending Conor to Joe for this fight. Very nice of you, by the Appreciate way. Appreciate it. What is the future for Conor McGregor in terms of the featherweight division? We know it's a massive cut for him, but his comments lead me to believe that he still does want to go down and attend to some potentially unfinished business. There. And I'll be lining fighters up for him. I fully believe that he'll be back with us again, with me at the 145 pound right, division. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Of course, the first order of business trying to avenge that loss against Nate Diaz. Also part of the lineup, co-main event at UFC 202, Glover Teixeira, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Guys don't call out Rumble, Glover does. He really, really wanted this fight badly, and he was heartbroken when it got called right. off. Fortunately, we were able to reschedule it close to the same date, and, and Glover is super pumped up. He feels very confident in this match, but when you're fighting Anthony Rumble Johnson, you got to watch out for that power. This guy hits so hard. Oh, oh he's out. my! He's, he's going to finish it right here. It is all over! Anthony Rumble Johnson! Maybe the hardest one-punch hitter in that division. Yeah, for my money, Rumble Johnson right now the biggest power threat in the sport, I think, in any division. I want to get to this fight now, Donald Cerrone and Rick Story. I want to start with you on this. Really amazing to see what Cowboy Cerrone has been able to do at 170 pounds. It's one thing to move up a division. It's another thing to dominate a guy like Patrick Cote, who had never really been dominated like that. I think, well, first of all, he's got a, a great body type for that division. You know, yeah, he's sure. lean and long. He's a great striker. He's got power. Oh, cute shot by Cerrone. Donald Cerrone does it again. On the other side, you have Rick Story, perennial tough out, and an extended layoff for him with some injuries. Really nice to see him back and really picking up where he left off. Yeah, Rick is tough as nails, and he's a grinder. You better be ready just for a brutal, grinding war with him. He's got a great chin. He's got good hands, he's got good wrestling. He's gonna do everything he can to keep this fight up close. Smother Cowboy Cerrone, get him up against the fence. If I was him, if I was in his corner, I would use his wrestling just to keep him on the fence. On the ground, Donald Cerrone has really good submission. He is not to be fooled around with on the ground, but Rick is very good at nullifying guys, pushing the fence and just working them over yeah. there. Want to segue here to the UFC Bantamweight division, and with respect to the champion Dominic Cruz, the 135er everybody's talking about right now is Cody Garbrandt. He'll find a place on what is a massive card here uh, against the veteran Takei Mizugaki. Yeah, that division is on fire. Um, I might be a little biased, but to me, that's my favorite division right now. And a guy like Cody Garbrandt, he's not—he hasn't hit his potential yet, you know. And so he has to get more experience. We always usually end up on plan B or plan C. It's never plan A. And so that wasn't the original fight that it was supposed to be. The original fight was supposed to be Garbrandt uh, versus Caraway. And Caraway is injured, so sometimes sure. you just have to go um, with who's available. And Mizugaki is a formidable opponent. He's got three times yeah. the experience that Cody has. And he's a tough guy since the very first day when he stepped in short notice um, for a championship fight, you know, his debut in the WC. He's been one of the longest tenured guys in the yeah. division, and he's a good test. Yeah, I think a perfect test in a lot of respects. If you're Cody Garbrandt and you have title aspirations, this is one you gotta have. We'll see how it goes down for, for No Love on August 20th. You know, this is moving night in the welterweight division. And one guy who is perpetually ready, Neil Magny, has won 10 of 11. You know, I must be, and I am, I'm very impartial, but I love Neil Magny. I just, 
seriously, you probably don't know this, he called me to take the Daniel Cormier fight. Wow. Neil Magny, he's like, I'm like 189 pounds, I could do it. He's like, I love you, man, it's good, you gotta fight, you know, let's stay there, but never, that guy's taken so many short notice fights, saved me on numerous occasions, he's just a competitor, he's willing to throw down with anybody, is improving constantly, very good wrestler, got good reach, striking is improving, but he's got a super stern test. Here comes the monsoon, Lorenz Larkin. What a fight. This is going to be an interesting fight for both guys and will move the winner of this into a, a very big fight for the next fight. Finally, I want to ask, you know, Joe in particular, you've been doing this since the early 1990s, but I think it's important for fans to realize that for a fight like this for Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor, I mean, this keeps you up at night. How excited are you to see these guys make the walk and run this back? You know, it, it's so fun. We do, we do so many shows now. We used to do like six shows a year. If you're doing like 44 shows, uh, it's hard to, you know, constant day in, day out. But then you get there and it's fight night and you have a fight like this to look forward to. And now you're just a fan. Yeah. That's what's awesome on show day. Weigh-ins are done. Everything right. else is good. Hopefully nobody tripped and fell down the stairs. But now you just get to sit there in the best seats in the house right. and enjoy it like everybody else. And our production crew is awesome at catching me spazzing out yeah. ringside. In the uh, always. Well, I wish we had a camera on Sean Shelby for the Korean Superboy Do Ho Choi, but you really get into this too. And certainly I know when you see guys turn in vintage performances in your divisions, you know, it really makes you happy. Not just that the matchup has materialized and produced a good result, but you like to see these guys succeed as much as anybody else. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, we all are super fans. Yeah. We really are. This is the greatest sport in the world, and crazy things happen all the time. That's what makes the sport the greatest in the world. And so genuinely, yes, I, I just like, you know, we put in all the hard work, especially, you know, the 385 people that work for the UFC put in the hard work, and it's nice just to sit there and be a fan, fight night at the end of the day. Well, we know if you're watching this, you guys are fans and avid fans at that. You'll be watching UFC 202, Diaz versus McGregor, the rematch from inside this T-Mobile arena on Saturday, August 20th. With that, for Joe Silva and Sean Shelby, I'm John Anik. Thank you for watching the watch list for UFC 202.